from the Milliers. If you have an RV that needs servicing or new equipment, this is Denise Lemillier. She's a member of our satellite club here in Kerrville. Yay. I didn't see Carlina. She said she was going to be here. I didn't see her from the Kerrville Daily Times, but she was there. And all these folks gave us money. It's a pretty awesome thing. All right, so at this point, we're going to move into our public image session. I think that most of you know these two people um, because they're just flat out amazing and they speak at Rotary things all over. But they were nice enough to drive over from Austin to be with us today and to talk about public image. Uh, Amber and Patrick are amazing in what they have done and how they have helped clubs with their public information and marketing. And I'm just so blessed to have them. Their bios are in the back, so I'm not going to read those. Amber and Patrick, it's yours now. conflict resolution at Rotary, please go to a, a peace conference. I had no idea what peace was in Rotary until I was involved in the one this last uh, June. And wow, it will change your Rotary experience. In fact, I was sitting there the whole time going, we do this, we do that, we do, I mean, it's incredible what Rotary and Rotarians are involved in with peace all over the world. So, and I love the generation talk because I have never worn a tie to anything Rotary. In fact, I'm wearing tennis shoes today and my t-shirt. And one of the people that were involved in the Peace Conference came up to me and she goes, she's from another, she's from Argentina and she's an amazing woman. And she goes, did you forget your tie today? And I said, you picked me and this is what you get. So <laughs> it is what it is, you know what I mean? So I'd be wearing shorts if, I, if it was allowed, but I don't think that's allowed. So uh, take it away. You know what, before we do though, one other shout out. How much fun was the game night? Yes. Oh, that was really fun. We've done lots of conferences before yeah. the game night, Christy. I think that was just fabulous. That was really a fun way for us and the open bar to connect. Was. And the open bar, not gonna lie, that was really special too. <laughs> okay, so who who do we not know? I know we know a lot. We have a lot of friends in this room. We've been coming here to this district for several years. We love you guys. But if you've never seen this, these two crazy people up here before, raise your hand so we know who to pick on. <laughs> well, welcome to the show, guys. It's gonna be fun. And for those of you that have heard our talk. We have different parts of our talk. This has been requested, so we are going to do this part. Some of it is new for some of you, some of it is not. If you have heard this before, listen to it with new ears and eyes, because maybe you'll catch something new. If not, feel free to sleep, and we'll see you in an hour. <laughs> um, also, for those of you that don't know us, we are a brother, sister, alien, couple, whatever we are now. And we do like to interrupt each other, and we like to make fun of each other. Like, I always invite her hair to the stage. Yeah. But uh, that is for fun, so please don't take offense to it. Just ride with us. And uh, we hope to uh, give you some inspiration today. Our intent, oh, what would you like to make sure we cover today? I do want to do a couple yeah. shout-outs yeah. here from the audience. Yeah. Because we do have um, lots of folks that we've been with several times. We've got some new people in the room. But we want to make sure that this is valuable time for all of us here together. So I'm going to just take two seconds here. Couple shout outs. If there's something from public images, a burning desire that you want to make sure that we cover, please let me know right now. Any public image burning desires before we get started that you have to know about. You may, well, can't wait to hear about branding, social media. Nothing? Image. Wow, we've never had nothing. Okay, this is good. So we can okay. talk about what we're talking about. And by the way, I oh, yes, 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 yes. Videos. How to, better, how to do better videos. Videos. I like it. Short, right. sweet, to the point. Learn some videos. And by the way, I feel very trapped in this little You area, can come so. up a little bit further if you want. I don't want to block the screen, but I felt trapped over there. How about why this is important? Should we yes. touch on some of that maybe a little bit today? Have you ever seen relevant social media? Yeah. Help me know which one's focused on. So, like, relevant, good content. And what social media platforms are relevant. Platforms, got it. I can answer that right away just because it's easy. If you are a Rotary Club, try to still work on Facebook because that is an NGO type platform. I feel I find that Rotary is still very centric into Facebook. 
before you dive into Instagram's, uh, all the other, I was going to say MySpace because people were talking TikTok. about MySpace. <laughs> Isn't that funny? So MySpace TikTok. is coming back because of the whole Twitter thing. TikTok, Instagram, Snapchat, etc. Those are important to have those, uh, some presence there, but make sure there's a, some great programs where if you do post on Instagram and also post on Facebook as well. And I'm going to set the tone on that because you brought it up just so right here while we're at it. We're going to use the word Facebook a lot today. I mean Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, social, all of the platforms. When I say the word Facebook, I am referring to social media. A lot of the things we're going to talk about work the same way, and I will explain that when we get to them. But just know I'm not trying to leave anything out if we do say Facebook. If you are already running an Instagram page or a TikTok page, you know that this also works hand in hand. Mm -hmm. So that will be fantastic. Right. All right. Let's set our intention then. So our intention, we really find this uh, important that you guys know what you're about to go through. And our intention is to value your time. We want you to walk away from our session today, this next hour. We want you to walk away going, wow, I got something here. And I can take it back and I can actually implement it right away. We also want to make sure that you leave here inspired with new connections. We want to encourage that you get to know every single person in this room. Because these are your brothers and sisters in Rotary. These are the people that are here for a reason. You chose to be here today. We're going to get into some of that why in a little bit. But get to know each other. Help each other. Support each other. If someone's having a project, share it on the social media. Talk about it in your community, etc. So connections and armed with tangible tools and resources. We promise you, we've done this a million times now. There has never been one time that we've done this and someone walks away and goes, why didn't you get anything? So you will get something if you if you ride with us today. I saw that meme and I like to remind us, at, you know, before Facebook and, and all of the social platforms that are out there, Rotary was the original social network, guys. We were already doing this. And so kind of getting back to those roots as well. That networking is so very important. All right. So, you want to public this? image yeah. is everything. So that's where we want to set the time. A lot of people think that we're going to come up here and immediately start digging into social media platforms or brochures or drive-by platforms. It's all of it, though. And so all of us, every single member of our club has an important role to play in the public image of our clubs, of our districts. And in fact, this is more important than anything else that we're going to talk about today. Uh, We've been talking about this exact thing for a little while now, and when we're going to specific districts, we'll just cover this. And we'll hear people afterwards go, thanks for covering that, because I thought public image didn't mean anything to me, because I'm never going to get on a computer. I'm never going to get on uh, any social media platforms. I'm never going to call the media. But now I know my role in Rotary, in public image. So please uh, take some of this stuff back to your club. If you have that club, we all have it, where there's those members that go, eh, I'm never going to like something, I'm never going to, well, now you have something you can do. I promise you, we promise you that if you follow these steps and, and make sure, that was really loud. It got really loud. Yeah. Uh, and you, you make sure you have a strength in that in your club, it's going, it's going to change and make and transform your club into, first of all, you all have amazing clubs, but you can always continue to grow. One of the so, things that we like to do is challenge all of you. And, and I love Noah's got to speak before yeah, yeah, yeah. because this is something Patrick and I feel so passionately about, right? My Rotary Club is my safe space. Um, after the election, after whatever is going on out there in the world, I know I get to go on Wednesday at lunch to my safe, happy family that I love and where none of the rest of the stuff matters. We want to serve together and have a heart for service, and that's it. Um, but I think we take for granted that that's our family, right? It's a comfortable space. We go in every week, and we don't necessarily notice that to a stranger, to a new person that's coming in for the first time, we start the meeting with a prayer and a pledge, and my club still sings, and that's weird, Yeah. <laughs> right? So it's good to remind ourselves, go in, the next time you go to your club with the eyes of a visitor, go in like it's your first time, it's not your family, it's not your comfort zone. You go in and see it, how somebody that's new for the first time is witnessing what your club looks like. That is public image. We need to do a regular check-in on our clubs. What do we look like? And ask those tough questions. Uh, we've been talking about this exercise for a couple of years now. So now when we go back to pets or conferences or whatever, people will run up to us and say, we did it, we asked the tough questions, and now blah, blah, blah. Now we have a new transformation of our club. Don't go in as a guest and go, uh, I feel this, but I'm not going to bring it up because I don't want to hurt any feelings. I'm telling you, we've been to clubs before, when we were doing a lot of club visits back in the day, and we walked into one club, and there was uh, it was 7 a.m. in a hospital, okay? 
And no offense to anyone that loves hospitals, but I do not like hospitals, okay? A lot of trauma in hospitals. And afterwards, they're like, can you stay for a minute after I was eating my third rubber bacon piece? And they said, we're having a membership problem. We just don't get it. And I said, well, I can tell you what your membership problem is. Unless you're a bunch of nurses and doctors and specialists, which they were not, not a single human being on planet Earth wants to wake up and go into a hospital at 7 a.m to eat rubber bacon and to hear about someone's book. They don't want to do it. And they looked at me like, whoa, that was blunt. I'm like, I'm being honest. They made the hard decision, they changed locations, and now they've tripled their membership. But what if they never had someone ask that, or you know, ask the question, and we were honest with them? So that is an incredible tool. Go back to your club as a guest this next week and ask the following questions. What is your community involvement? I love this one. Because, first of all, Rotary is the number one service organization on the planet. We all know that, right? And if you don't, I can give you some stats in a minute. And that's an important thing to walk into your club as the number one service organization on the planet. You are the center of service of your community. So, are you doing the same project every single year, and the community just doesn't have the heart to tell you, hey, we love you, but Kerrville's got plenty of that now. <laughs> it is not the job of the community to do that, right? Because we're the leaders. So go and have that heart-to-heart -heart conversation every once in a while. Say, hey, Kerrville, do you really still need those dictionaries, or do you need a skate park or a homeless shelter, or do you need support with police and military? Whatever it is. When the community hears you have that honest conversation, they're going to love it. And they're going to say, actually, we were waiting for you to ask. Here's the list. You know? <laughs> and that helps not only with a club's heartbeat, but that relationship with the community. What are your members like? We've been to clubs where literally we want to quit our club and join that club because the club is so awesome, so welcoming. Uh, you want one, to of my, yeah. one of my favorite ones that we went to, and it was unexpected. I just wasn't expecting. We sat down, we did our prayer pledge. They didn't sing, um, but then they said, "Okay, everybody stand up and greet each other." And it was kind of like church. Like everybody got up and walked around, shook hands, and hugged, and just spent a couple minutes like connecting. And I just hadn't done that in a Rotary club, and it was something very Hello. small, and we loved it. It was really fun. It's something easy to implement. My club is doing something called Five Minutes of Connection. And we started it on Zoom, and now we do it in person. And it's at the very beginning of the meeting. We take five minutes, and they ask a silly, stupid question like, uh, do you like buffets or set, you know, crazy, weird, or what's your favorite game show? The question's not the importance. It's the connection, right? But what we found is when guests come, they walk away going, hey, I already feel like I know this club. I've already met seven of the members because the table fits seven people, and I want more. So that's the good side. Now, we've been to other clubs where we're the speaker, and I've walked into a club literally where the guy comes up to me and goes, get out of my seat. <laughs> now, I'm a New Yorker, so I was like, uh, three, two, one, three. Because <laughs> it was not a New York spot, so I was, I was ready to chew that person out. But I went to the club, club president and said, if I was a guest, I'd run. I would get out of here. You have a culture problem. So that's those tough questions to ask. Because I'm going to tell you something right now, and this is normally what we say at the very beginning. If you, you could be the best public image superstar on social media, you could make the best 10 second videos that are to the point, you could have the best media coverage in the world. But if you're not providing what you're selling, what's the point? So you can literally be like, oh, everybody come to Rotary Rotary, and you walk in, and it's that kind of situation. So you don't want that. Um, you can interrupt me at any point. The vibe of the club we sort of talked about, but another part of the vibe, is your club fun? Is your club exciting and inspiring? Or is your club going through that boring phase? My club is going through a boring phase, and I know we're being recorded, so hi, club. I love you. <laughs> uh, but we were going through a boring phase, and I had to have that heart to heart, where I was like, oh, my gosh, I come with Ask those questions. Your club should be the place that you come, and I know this is tough to always hit this home run, but it is possible. When you come together, you ask the questions, and you get to work. Your club should be the, club, the space that every week, every member, every guest is so inspired, they can't wait to come back the next week. And that's where we have kind of developed this little secret sauce. Yeah, I'm going to skip. We're going to go right into it, because you kind of led into it, so I thought that's where it yeah. cool. So a little bit of the secret sauce, it's just what we've kind of come up with as we're traveling around to different clubs and different districts, is that these are four ingredients that we're really seeing hit home in clubs and in district meetings everywhere we go. The convention, sure who's been to the international convention? Yeah. They have all that. Beautiful. That's right. the feeling we're looking for. Inspiration. 
every meeting, make sure that we have something that is leaving your people inspired to be a Rotarian. Right? Make sure we're providing time for them to connect with each other, that original social network, those relationships, business relationships. This is important. This is our foundation. Valuing everyone's time. Don't bring up boring content. <laughs> Make sure our speakers are on point. Can I, can I say something about yeah, that? Please. We all know those speakers. Okay? <laughs> that when you see on the bill, you're like, oh, God, yeah, I'm going to pick on you because I love you. Right? <laughs> oh, Judy's doing that thing again. You know what I'm saying? Well, Judy's amazing. So that's why <laughs> I would go anywhere to see Judy. But, listen, exactly. Yeah. And John. <laughs> but seriously, you know those speakers. You're like, oh, gosh, it's that same person again next one. I'll, I'll use an example. These are two dear friends of ours, and we sort of follow each other on the speaking world, so we were together in Lubbock last time, and we didn't get to see his speech that you're going to see tomorrow night, which is incredible. What we Call saw, all your friends right now and tell them to be here tomorrow night. I'm not even kidding. And, and let me say that. We're busy people. We're all busy people, right? And we were like, Chris is like, you want to stay in that? We are like, we have to stay in this Yeah, we're going to stay in this That's the feeling you want in your club. You want those speakers that literally fill the seat and make you either cry, laugh, want to be a better person, or want to go to that restaurant because that food looks amazing. Think outside the box. Don't just do the same person that sells the same book or the same, you know, whatever, every single year. And then set your intentions. We find it to be very, very important. Setting an intention right off the bat. Every week, the clubs in the districts that are coming back to us and saying, you know, we're setting intentions now, and people are really liking it. It allows you to feel respected immediately. Here's the intention of the moment. Here's how we're going to value your time. And if we're not hitting the mark, let us know. It's a great litmus test. Or Absolutely. And it makes us kind of intentionally prepared. Yeah. It makes you show up to your club intentionally you show prepared me. as well. So it's not about what we do, right? It's about why we do it, why we're here, and the time to share is now. Why are we all here on a Thursday morning, giving up a day of work, some of us, right? Some of us are giving up a day of our beautiful retirements. But who does that? Who gives up a whole day to come to a conference and sit together? I'll, I'll, I'll give you a perfect example. I've been on the road for an entire month. I've been back home in New York for a couple of weeks. Then I flew to Vegas. Don't ask me why. <laughs> no offense to Vegas. Uh, <laughs> love Vegas. But I have slept in my bed two days in the last month. And when my friends that I was traveling with said, you're going where right when you get home? I said, I'm going to Kirkville to be with my Rotarians. And they said, can't you like maybe not do that? I said, no, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. I know why I'm here. She knows why she's here. We believe we're busy people. You're busy people. But we know that every hour we put into Rotary is changing a life somewhere in the world. We have no doubt about that. Now we have seen proof of it. People run up and go, because of what we heard from you, now there's children that have limbs in Africa. I'm like, oh my God, that's amazing. But thank you, but it's you, not us. But we do believe that every time we're with our fellow Rotarians, trying to help inspire you guys to think outside the box, the box. we learn from you guys every time we're with you. Absolutely. I mean, this morning already is worth my time. Absolutely. Seriously, an incredible talk. So think about, what is your why? Also, this is one of the biggest, and we've been talking about this for what, Eric, five, six years, Lisa. By the way, we're, we're having a little reunion this, this weekend. This is the incredible team, our leaders, that we've had for how many years now? And so it's really good to see them, and they have uh, paved the way for public image to be the important talks. Can we give a round? I mean this, Jim. Yeah, give a round of applause. Yeah, 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 yeah. Public image is not always the cool kids. Guys. When we started, we were like <laughs> not, and then we had to do a lot of work to make yeah. public image cool in Rotary. But we've been talking about this for years now, and I promise we're not going to dive in because he's going to talk more about it uh, tomorrow night. But this is an important slide. Or tonight, tonight, sorry, tonight, tonight. Uh, this is an important slide that take home with you. Every single thing you're thinking of publicizing, everything, from your fundraisers, your projects, your weekly meetings, what is the why? No one cares about the what. No one cares about my bio. I hate when it's red. I wish I could burn it. Because no one cares. They want to know why are you here. They want to know why is your Rotary Club doing the project it's doing. So I'll give a quick example. I got in trouble for this uh, a couple months ago because they it were serving. It was really funny. funny. So I did this little story and then they served the spaghetti dinner for lunch and the whole crowd was like, ah, good money. You know the spaghetti dinners? We all know them. We've all been to them. And no offense to everyone on camera, but they're usually not that great. 
Okay? <laughs> you're not going there for that awesome ribeye and that twice baked potato. You're going there because your friend said, hey, can you pay 40 bucks for the spaghetti dinner so we can raise some money for our project? Yeah. <laughs> and you get the same people that show up every single year. Okay? Yeah. And what we find is a mistake that a lot of rotary clubs do is they take the picture of the not so great spaghetti dinner. <laughs> okay? And they put it on a poster everywhere in the community. And it says, meet me at the First Baptist Church on a Sunday night, 7 p.m., $40, spaghetti dinner and a garlic bread, going to the Rotary Club of Kerrville, I'm just going to keep using Kerrville, the Rotary Club of Kerrville's project, blah, blah. You're going to get the same people, same year, because they know, they love you, and they're going to sit through that spaghetti dinner. And if you find a spaghetti dinner that's good, let me know, because I won't come. <laughs> but what if you did this? What if instead you said, uh, the Rotary Club of Kerrville, spaghetti dinner, Friday night, da da da, First Baptist Church, and a quote of the impact of the project saying, if it wasn't for the Rotary Club of Kerrville, I wouldn't have the opportunity to have an education. I wouldn't have an opportunity to now have a small business that is providing education and resources to the community. If you put, or I could say that about homeless, I could say about building, anything. If you put the why, the impact of the why in all your marketing materials, and bigger, they, bigger than the picture of spaghetti. Get rid of the picture of spaghetti. No one wants to see that. Literally, the why. The why. And if we're walking by and I'm in the community, I'm in the uh, HUB starting here, right? This is where HUB yeah. starting? So I'm in the HUB and I see that poster and I go, huh? Oh, I don't like spaghetti. Maybe. Oh, but it's for that. I'm going to give you 100 bucks, not 40. I promise you, we have seen this work and it is, we were talking about this years ago. Now corporations mm -hmm. are talking about it everywhere. I cry at a State Farm commercial now. <laughs> I'll sit there and go, oh my God, I thought it was. Watching a rotary commercial. Those Chevy commercials are good. Oh, and the Folgers in your cup. Yeah. I mean, that's constant, right? Remember the, the soldier comes home and the mom's good? That's the why. And then when you go to the store, and I'm sorry, Folgers is not the best coffee on the planet. But people are going to buy the Folgers because they remember the why. It connects. So does this make sense to everybody? I promise you, if you take away just that alone, that's going to change your game. So think about every project you do. Think about a project you did last year, six months ago, whatever. Make a phone call to the impact. I'll give one last example because we have time and I think it's important. The domestic violence shelter project we did years ago in our district for women in Rotary. It was a project that was extremely boring. It was hammering, painting, weed eating, mowing, boring stuff. But it had an impact. And when the news media showed up, this new reporter, she was just covering that. And I went up to her and said, hey, how are you? This is not the story. Can you go over and talk to the client and find out what this means to her? She sat down with the client. The client said, in other words, if it wasn't for these women in Rotary, my child would still live in hell. But today, he can imagine the dream again. If you needed to raise money for that project next year, and you just put a poster, we're weed eating, and we're painting, and we're this, people are going to look at your screen. If you put a child can imagine a dream again, they'll give you $25,000. That's the key to marketing. That's the key to road, rotary style marketing. What is the impact? The why? If everything you do. I should be able to look on your website. I should be able to look on your Facebook page. I should be able to look at any project you do in the future and go, oh my gosh, look at that impact. I'm in. So, that makes sense? And by the way, we do trainings for like six to seven hours. So when we come and do these talks, sometimes I ramble a little bit longer. always says, we've got time. We've, we've got, got time. time. And she freaks out. And, and I'm the timekeeper. So if you see yeah. me timekeeping and on schedule, that's what's happening. She always right? makes signals. She's like, yeah, every, she'll be like, hey, this. And I'm like, what, what, what are you doing? I ignore her. But I mean, <laughs> the other really important piece of this is the time to share is now. Because yes. we've got to start bragging a little bit about why we're doing what we're doing, who we are, who our friends are. It's a really important piece. Before we get into that bragging, I'm, I'm going to come back to it. I just didn't want to lose that opportunity. I want to remind us about how important all three of these areas of Rotary and how they all work together. Public image, <coughs> membership, foundation. We all know this now, right? We've been hearing this now for several years. It's an important piece. And we're going to have an amazing presentation on membership coming up next, and we can't wait. But because we um, had that wonderful generational conversation to kick us off this morning, we want to bring back an old piece that we haven't yes, really talked so about. Yes, before you see the slide, yeah, we have not done a slide in years. Judy's going to love it. Now, this has nothing to do with politics. Okay? Nothing. Take the politics nothing. out. So when you see this person, don't go, oh, God. Okay? <laughs> this has nothing to do with politics. Okay? 
Bernie Sanders. <laughs> <laughs> We're bringing back Bernie. We're bringing Bernie back is. Bernie. But there's a reason for it. Bernie had a huge following. Of who? Young people. Young people. Didn't he? He inspired a whole generation of young people who followed him. Take away the politics. Take away the politics. But he was a wonderful connector. Um, providing leaders and motivating, had visionary, had an online presence. But most importantly, the word we kind of connected with him was he was an innovator. Right? And that is what we really identified with. Innovators come in all ages. Every one of those generational things that we looked at earlier. Innovators are in all ages. It's not just the young kids. So the reason we bring this right? up, okay, and this is not an official rotary stance. No, obviously. This is obviously not an official rotary stance. This is just something that Amber and I felt was important to bring up today, especially because of the conversation that we just had, which is awesome. That rotary clubs around the country, especially in, in North America, will go to some districts or, or clubs where literally they've got a pinball machine up front. They're young now, they've got the cool jeans on. They're trying to be not who they are so young people can come in and join them. And you can smell it from a mile. It's like that psycho ex girlfriend. You're like, bye, like, get out of my world. And it's a real problem. And we look at them and go, this isn't who you are. No young person wants to be in this. We want to, because I still can see, I said we. I know, you did say we. I'm still young. We're a little young still. Uh, when I first started in speaking in Rotary stuff, I was 30 something, and I was still that young professional, and now I'm not. You know, I get very offended by that. But anyway, I'm 45 two weeks from now. Thank you. But here's the word. Thank you. Thank you. We want, to, we want to encourage Rotary Clubs to be themselves, be the best versions of themselves, be the innovators they are. Because the more innovators that you have in your club, the more it feels like it's the center of service, the more welcoming and fun and inspiring it is. I promise you, every young person, uh, Noah, every young person in the world will want to be a part of it. Because we're looking for innovators that are 25, 35, 45, 55, 65, 75, 85, 95 and 105. Because literally, I want to be around people that have been around the block who know what the world's about, know what's happening and can teach me something. And I want to also be the person that can mentor as well. That's the beauty of Rotary. So, the only reason we bring up this gentleman, okay, is because he used technology. What's that? Yeah, what's he holding there? He used an iPhone. And this is a really dated slide, guys. This is a long time ago, he right? Was, he was an unknown senator that really no one knew who he was. He just liked to complain a lot on, on the floor. And he picked up a cell phone, and he found, and he came to where the young people were, and he said, hey, you want to come follow him? And they did. Now, again, take away from politics. Every single Rotarian in the entire world, if he can do it, they can do it. <laughs> but don't change who you are. You're incredible human beings. You're the innovators of your community, and I promise you, the more you allow that place, not space, but place of innovation, young people will follow you in droves. Do not change who you are for young people. Now, that doesn't mean you don't be flexible. That doesn't mean you don't let them come dressed like this or with a nose ring. We're not talking about that, okay? But that's an important thing, I think, for us to bring up again. So, yeah. does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, we've had two times. We did this in Lubbock, and I was like, oh, we can't do that in Lubbock. We cannot bring up the Bernie Sanders all the time. He's like, we're doing it, we're doing it. And I was like, no, we can't, we can't. And three people were like, whoop. And one guy said, amen. Because like, we are a non-political, non-religious organization. We're going to bring it up in a second. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so here's where we're going to start bringing it all together. We've got to know who we are as a club, right? We've got to know our why. So that is going to be step number one, figure out who you are as a club in this district that's your why. Then we start developing materials. And most importantly, we start bragging. So that's where I want to go back to. we got to start bragging about who we are. And we want to leave you with a couple of bragging and talking points. One time. What, how much time do we have? When, do, when is our stopping point? <laughs> Noon. <laughs> <laughs> we have to do awards. We'll need about 5-10 minutes for that. So you've got another 20 minutes. All right. 15, 15. Thank you. 20, 25 to 30 minutes. 15. Okay. <laughs> so here's the deal. I'll, I'll talk fast. This right here is key. People come up to us and go, well, how can we brand our club and how do we brand our district? If you don't know who you are, you cannot brand yourself. If we were working for a corporate, if we were trying to brand Tesla, and we walked into Tesla and said, hey, so who are you? And he goes, we're a car. I'm like, okay, there's a million cars out there. Who are you? So ask these questions. 
do the club survey. I know people hate surveys. <laughs> Make sure it's anonymous, okay? I know, you know what I'm talking about. But they hate them, but guess what? It's the only way you can get the anonymous feel of the club. Rate your areas of focus, okay? We dive into this more in our trainings that we can do sometime, but literally, those areas of focus, pick six or seven, let your club rate it, take the top three, put that on your Facebook page, put that on your website. I should be able to go to the Kerrville website and say, Rotary Club of Kerrville Noon is the center of service of their community. We focus on military, homelessness, and education. Now that doesn't mean you don't do other things, but that is your boom boom focus for the year. Every year that clubs are actually doing this, things change. Maybe one area, and it keeps that heartbeat going to the club. It allows members to feel heard, and allows the community to go, wow, I want to be involved in that. And Amber loves to say, if your club, like our clubs are completely different clubs, like different animals. Totally different. Totally different. And if I walk into her club, and, and all they do is local stuff, but all they want to do is international, she's going to say, hey, go over to Cosmo. They're really into international. It keeps retention as well. And it should be. That is what we are in that original network, right? We're connecting people in the right homes as well. It's We're better Rotarians when we find our right fit with like-minded people. So that's also key in it. And brag, brag, brag. We literally told this story years ago. We had a general come up. He was 90-something years old. I was like, I'm in trouble. That's it. I'm done. And he looked at me and he said, not only was that the best talk I've ever heard about Rotary. Because remember, we didn't talk about Rotary back then. But if we would have heard about the bragging part of it, we wouldn't have a member in the 80s. We wouldn't have a membership problem today. And that is 100% true. And we're starting to hear Rotary International leaders also talking about, hey, share, brag, share, brag. We've got to share the great work we're doing in our community. It blows me away when I go places and people think, did you join a cult or something? Because you're really into this Rotary thing. And I'm like, no. I found my people. I found where integrity matters, where action happens, and where we're changing the planet. And I remember a group of my friends thought it was a little cuckoo, maybe. I wore my rotary hat that Amber designed, yeah. beautiful, to St. Martin. We were on our way to another island. And literally, my friends were like, uh, what's going on here? This is creepy, because people are going, are you a Rotarian? Oh, hey, we're Rotarians, woo! And there's all these Rotarians <laughs> in the country. I said, guys, this means their village was safe. They have clean water. They have education. This has saved their lives. That simple. We are the number one service organization on the planet. And you are the number one service organization in your community, I guarantee you. So share the great work you're doing. But do it right. Do, do it nice and pretty, which we're going to get into right now. So we've put together a list of talking points. Many of you guys have seen this. There's several of you new ones here, though. So I'm going to go through some of our very favorites of them. Like Patrick said, our, our go-to elevator speech, we're part of the number one service organization on the planet. Period. If somebody asks me what Rotary is, that's my answer every time. Oh, we're going to have to remember what Kelly says. We've used I know, Kelly is so good. We're oh, the only organization that has a plant. Oh, don't oh, yeah, sell yeah, this tonight. Right. Right. <laughs> we use it in other places. We use it in other places. We're, I love what you say. Most people don't realize that Rotary was instrumental in the Charter of the United Nations. Yeah. Raise your hand if that's the first time you've ever heard that. The whole I'm room should be raising their hand. Look, take first away the politics of it. We're not talking about the politics. But think about the countless millions of lives that have been saved because of Rotarians that came together and said, let's help charter this. And we are so deeply still involved. I don't think, and one of you guys let me know because it's changed. We used to be the only NGO that had uh, uh, ambassador representative to the, uh, to the United Nations. I think now there's a few others. But we are deeply involved. At the Peace Conference, UNICEF uh, CEO said if it wasn't for Rotary, we wouldn't be able to do what we did. So think about that as you go into your communities. When I tell that to my network, they go, what? I just thought it was a group of people that had lunch and talked about insurance. I'm like, well, let's we'll sort of do that. <laughs> but we changed the world. So think about that. Also, um, this is one of our favorites, especially in today's world, especially with what Noah was talking about. We are the number one service organization on the planet that's non-governmental, non-political, non-religious. It does not matter who you are, who you voted for, if you didn't vote at all, who you pray to, if you don't pray to anyone, as long as you have the integrity and the, uh, the understanding and the want and desire to serve under the four-way test, we welcome you. I promise you, if you share that in your communities, people are starving and hungry to find a place that they can come and be who they are and not be pushed into something they're not and to bring their gifts 
to help change the part of the world they care about. I promise you, share that. And if you do pray in your, your club, that's fine. My club does not pray. Your club does pray. But let people know when you're bringing them, hey, just let you know we're going to pray. If you're Jewish, if you're Hindu, if you're not, that's totally fine. In fact, when I was president of my other club, I had a Jewish woman who had just joined. And she was like, hey, what's this praying to Jesus? I, 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 what, I said, hey, bring your prayer next week. And then someone else said, well, I'm Buddhist. What about, I didn't know we, I said, yes, guys, we're not religious. Come in. So it became this beautiful uh, monthly uh, invocations. It was beautiful. So my point is, share that. You will see the community light up. Because they don't know this. They just don't know it. A lot of people don't realize that the Rotary Foundation is such a powerhouse. I mean, it is a powerhouse and it is recognized around the world as a powerhouse. Charity Navigator is the evaluator, right, of all nonprofits and consistently ranks our Rotary Foundation with a four star um, and 100% great. I mean, we are really head and shoulders above all other nonprofits. And I brought this up last night in the, uh, the major donor reception. If you're talking about foundational stuff in your club, some clubs will go to and they're like, pull out your wallets, give me your dollars. And like the new people are like, uh, what am I in? Share. Every time you bring up anything foundation, it takes one second. I don't care if it's every week. Saying, just to let you know, we are considered a four-star charity navigator, 100% rated. We're considered the premier foundation around the world. When, you, when someone hears that before, after they give money, they feel a little bit better. So people don't know this. They don't know that we are, like, I can't tell you how many people will go, oh, that hurricane, oh my god, that's horrible. I'm going to text the number 46252 to American Red Cross. Look, American Red Cross is a great organization. But I also say, hold on a second. <coughs> also, let, let's find a rotary network there. Ukraine's a perfect example. Yeah. The disaster relief fund. Do you know that, by the way, just so you know, I think, and only if I'm wrong, I think membership has almost doubled in Ukraine, or it's gotten close to it, after the war began. We can't sometimes even double our membership in South Austin. South Austin. <laughs> Why is that the case? It's the case because they see the action. Their lives are being saved. They know that when a Rotarian says, I'll be right back, I'm going to get you what you need to survive. They're right back with what they need to survive. That money that is being donated to, to, to disasters is going straight to it. So share that in your community. I'm going to make one more quick one here, and then we're going to jump in because I do want to get into some of the social yeah, media show stuff. Me up. I am going to move us here. No, you're good. <laughs> um, polio. I think this is really important. We are this close to eradicating polio around the world. It, that has obviously become another hot topic again here recently. But I think it's important to notice the generational differences in this conversation, right? Patrick and I don't know polio. Thank God. That's not something that I grew up with. I'm 44, so just that big of a difference, right? I do know Zika. I know Ebola, we all know COVID, right? Those things are things that have impacted me directly, HIV. What's really great when we're having that polio conversation with our younger Rotarians is to make sure they understand that that infrastructure that Rotarians put together with UNICEF, with the United Nations, is where the world turns to stop the spread of these other diseases every time there's an outbreak. It's where, it's where the world turns for peace and conflict. I mean, I'm telling you, this peace conference changed my life. They literally talked about this exact thing. The COVID response that Rotarians have had all over the world to make sure vaccines are gone to developing nations and resources and peace and conflict, it's all because of the incredible work you guys have done from 1989 on with the polio eradication. So first of all, thank you. And second of all, that should be known everywhere. That should be known everywhere. So not only is it gonna eradicate polio, we're gonna finish that, but we're gonna keep that infrastructure for the rest of our Existence. And hopefully, at some point, we don't need to use it anymore, right? All right, so All I'm right. going to skip through these, and we're going to go to these last, because we have just about 10 minutes left. I think we all know the importance of proper rating. This has been something we've been talking about for a real, real long time. Five minutes left. Just know that that Rotary Master Brand means something. The word Rotary with the wheel together, down there in the corner. Everybody see it? That is what, if I say Master Brand, that's what I'm talking about. I am not talking about any of those. <laughs> Those are the old logos. We used to call them old and new. Now it's incorrect and correct. That's how clear it is now, guys. It's been about the, ten. It's been about ten years now. We don't like to be the Rotary Police. We're not the Rotary Police, and I hope that no one thinks I'm the Rotary Police. But the bottom line is, RI is really stickler now. And so, why is this important? important. We'll talk about that. Why? Yeah. Real quickly, she's rushing through me. 
But if you were the Coca-Cola company in two seconds, and we were the regional directors, and we decided to change the colors to that beautiful burnt orange for the day, okay? Come on, give me a little love. Uh, so, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, one other Longhorn, uh, have a wonderful season. So, here's the deal. We would be fired the next day, okay? Why? Because they've spent millions upon millions of dollars to find that beautiful red Pantone code that makes you want to walk past in a summer day and open that Coke and drink a cold Coca-Cola. Well, Rotary's done the same thing. They didn't spend millions of dollars, but they got experts together to create a style guide, okay? Did they spend millions of dollars? Okay, well, they did. I was trying to say that we did, but no, okay, I guess we did. Uh, so, no, but we, we took the time and energy Rotary did to create this visual identity. It has the exact Pantone codes for the blue and gold. But why is this important? It's important because I want to make sure, you want to make sure, and all of us around the Rotary world want to make sure that all of the work that we're doing in Fredericksburg, Kerrville, India, Pakistan, Korea, New York, Austin, Utah, Houston, every single junction, every single thing, <laughs> gotta get junctions in love, every single thing that we are doing gets the same credit for the great work. The studies have shown, no one knows what that rotary wheel is on that billboard going 60 miles an hour. Around the world they do, because around the world, when they see that wheel, they know that their lives have been saved, they have education, they have peace and conflict resolution. So we want to make sure all the great work that Kerrville is doing is getting the exact same credit as that Rotary Club in Africa. That's the importance. And I promise you, at least they used to always say this, Starbucks used to not have to have the Starbucks. Or had to have the Starbucks. Now it doesn't. Maybe one day we'll get rid of that Rotary. I actually like it. But maybe one day we'll get rid of it. I promise you, the more you look at it this way, go back to your clubs and say, do we have the right branding? Do we have the right branding on that? Do we have the right branding on that? We will get, in 10 years, credit all over the planet for the incredible work we're doing. Because people are just going to walk around and go, oh my god, all I see is this, this dang rotary thing everywhere. And it's all good stuff. So think about it that way. Does that make sense? How's everybody doing, by the way? Because I see a bunch of eyes. Everybody doing okay? All right, I'm going to real quickly, in our last five minutes, do I five or four? Three, two. <laughs> That's it. Let's just open it up for questions. Okay, I can do this really quickly. Guys, videos and photos. If we take a video or a photo and we're going to post it up there on social media, take two seconds and give it an actual name. This is your one little tools and resources to take away. Our phone automatically gives that thing a name anyhow. It's JPEG 0234567. Doesn't make any sense to anybody. But if you will save it as Patrick and Amber show in Wyo Ranch <laughs> and then post it up on Facebook, those words are actually searchable in the background, and they help us get better reach, okay? So that's our little cheat right there. Take an extra step. Video in. should be literally, I say minute or less, she'll say 10 seconds, okay? And why is this? It takes four, it used to be four to eight times for someone to recognize something pre-social media and, and, and uh, iPhone. Now it's 40 was the last number I heard pre-pandemic. I'm looking at social media uh, over here. I don't know if that's still enough. Yeah, it is. 40 times, because we're so distracted. So no one's going to watch a two-minute video in today's world. It needs to be short, to the point, impactful, with a hot link, with a hyperlink, mm -hmm. in the body of the message, that then allows the person to go into a website to take the time they could read it for two hours. But you want to catch people, get to the point, boom, boom, and then you can take time later. I'm going to pull, skip the hashtag and the tagging and bring it all together into the art of posting just so we can kind of have it all together. So we've taken that video, we've given it a name, and then this would be an example of how to write that post. Um, excellent hashtag Zoom training tonight with fellow Rotarians at Rotary District 5870. I'm tagging the other district so it can be seen there as well. Really looking forward to learning more from at another Rotarian's name so it's going to be shown to all of her friends as well. And uh, about at Rotary International. It's going to tag Rotary International. All the people that like their page are going to get to see it now. Membership on November 7th Zoom meeting. Hashtag one district strong. Hashtag service about self. Hashtag people of action. Right? So we've got some good filing systems in there. We've got some really great tagging going on in there. And it's intuitively written as one paragraph. 
Google really likes all of that about. So if you're the person in your club that does this, then you already know what I'm talking about, right? I see heads nodding. If you're not the person that does this, that's okay too. And by the way, just real quickly, this also works for your small businesses. Absolutely. If you're not posting like this, you're wasting your time. I'm just going to be blunt with you. Here's the deal. Hashtags are a filing cabinet of information. I know we're doing this fast. We normally cover just this in an hour, okay? But we can always come back sometime. We love you guys, and we'll dive in. But here, we dive in about media and how to handle television media, etc. But here's the deal. Hashtags, for instance, hashtag chicken fried steak. If you type in hashtag chicken fried steak, you're going to see thousands of chicken fried steak posts. Right? Well, you do the same with Rotary. Three of them will be Patrick's. Okay, three of them will be Patrick's. <laughs> but here's the deal. Your Rotary Club should have a hashtag. Your district should have a hashtag. And it's not D, this or that, or uh, Curl. Because Curl will use that themselves. It needs to be something that's intuitive that Google understands. And if you need help with that, we can help you with that. Secondly, tagging. Why is tagging important? Tagging is a free way for you to get larger reach. I'll give you a two second example. If you were to tag, Kerrville. Kerrville might have 100,000 followers on their public Facebook page. But Kerrville might have started back in the day with another page that had 10,000 followers. Then they got rid of it because back then people did that. All right? That page still exists though. So when you're tagging, which we don't have the time really to get into how, uh, but you'll learn, we can help you, we can come back and teach you. But here's the deal. Make sure you take the time to tag the 100,000 person. So if I have Dwayne, Christy, and Sandy, and me, and we have, let's say, 4,000 friends together, and we tag each other on a post that, oh my gosh, that chicken fried steak was amazing today while we were serving rotary, da 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 but we decided to enter Kerrville's, we just took a 4,000 potential reach of audience to now 104,000 potential reach of audience. And let's just say Matt McConaughey happened to join us, there's 10 million extra people. You get my point. I know this is fast and to the point, but if you're not posting like this, you're not getting the full potential. This is so. Whoa, well, you already took it away. Yes, it does work. Yes, uh, but that that posting that posting right there is massive key to getting free public image and getting that word out. Remember, we started with public image is everything. So as long as you work on that, your product's amazing. You're 10 million steps ahead of other people. But then you start getting into who you are, you start bragging about it, you start posting about it, you start inviting the media about it, you get the point, and then it's suddenly, you, Kerrville Rotary Noon is like the boom boom. Everyone knows about it, everybody sees it, it's amazing. Right? Yes. yes. Uh, so go back to the checklist real quick. All this stuff is available. We will share this with you guys. Um, one of our teammates is a part of your district. We are brother and sister, we love Pam. We can make sure who that- Who knows Pam Blankensee? Pam Blankensee. <laughs> So Pam and Amber and I started working together 10 years ago, mm -hmm. and so Pam and Amber and I are brother and sister. We come up with a lot of fun and interesting, crazy stuff, and then it gets shared to other districts. You might already have this, actually. I hope you do. If not, we'll get it to you, okay? okay. But this is the Rotary Year Checklist, and everyone who's going to Pets next year, you will get it, because now Pets shares it. This right here, if you do this with your board, you are 10 steps ahead of other clubs, okay? So now, so now we're gonna. Well, I'm gonna ask, did everybody get a value for their time today? Yeah. <laughs> you feel a little bit inspired. I hope a little inspired. Yes. No. Yeah. Okay. Good. Then I hope I hope uh, we get to see you guys again. Feel free to always reach out. We're here for you. Again, Pam's our teammate. So if you have any questions, uh, we'll all free answer. But now we're gonna transition to something exciting. Amber, uh, Pam, and I created something what ten years ago. Yeah almost, uh, called the Public Image Rockstar Challenge. And we started in our district, and then our goal was for it to go everywhere else if anybody wanted it. And we're so excited that you guys have been doing this for, what, three or four years now? And so this year, we have the honor of giving away the awards. But I want to say, for all the clubs, uh, Chrissy, I asked her to give me a list of all the clubs that participated so I, so I could name them. Every club participated. So there's no, I mean, every club, some way, somehow, participated. And we give like really cool banners, but I like this. But uh, if you were, if you did three or more, you got fifty dollars sent to your club to use for anything you needed. And if you were one of the top six, is it six? You got a hundred dollars, which is really cool. But why is this important? The reason we, the three of us, created this 
is a way for clubs to get involved, to go step by step, to become public image rock stars. So yes, it is a competition and it's fun, but it's really so that you guys have tangible resources every year, because it gets harder every year, to really become the best they can possibly be in public image. And here are six of the best of the year. I also want to note that um, much of this challenge is directed around our citations as well. So we're able to get all of our birds, right, together. And I love it, and I'm so proud that yeah. this is, this is so, great. So, it, when I call out your club name, if you are the president, please stand up. If you don't have a president here, you're just from that club, please stand up. But we're going to hand these out. Rotary Club of Alamo Heights. First <laughs> one. Christy, get up here. You've got to take pictures. Yeah, let's get them all. Everybody okay. stay up here with us. Rotary Club of Blanco County. Who do we got here? Woo! Woo! I don't think there's a properly branded t-shirt. I know. Look how nice you are. Here, hand that here, you go. here you go. There we go. Congratulations. All right. Rotary Club of Burning New. Yes. Who do we got here? Nice.